Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to, we'll say, work out the formula for the black body curve for using a quantized approach. Now, this video leads directly on to, we'll say, my uh, video showing how to get the black body radiation curve using a continuous, uh, a continuous energy levels. And of course, continuous energy levels, as we know at this stage, are incorrect. So we needed to have quantized energy levels. Now, I'm actually going to do this pretty quickly because. Uh, it's, it's very similar to my continuous energy level uh, scenario. The point here is that Max Planck decided that instead of having a continuous energy level, you must only you can only have uh, specific integer values of an energy level. Okay, so if we say that you can either have zero energy and you can either have multiple integers of a particular energy level, which I'm going to call in this case E zero. The point is you cannot at any stage have zero E zero over two that energy level doesn't exist. You only have quantized or packets of energy. All right? So um, let's go ahead and work out this black body curve. So the first thing we need to know is actually I'll just define this, right? So the, the energy E sub n is equal to n times E sub 0. That's the first thing. Now we know at this stage that the, the probability of being at energy level E sub n is written by, like that. So that's the probability of being at energy level E sub n. All right? and that's equal to the probability sub n and that's equal to, as we said in the past, it's constant times the exponential times the Boltzmann factor like that and we need to work this out. I said before if you integrate this to, to from negative to positive infinity you're going to get you're going to get 1. So we're, this time we're going to use summations, okay? So we're going to say the following that integrating from n is equal to, or from n is equal to, we'll say, 0 to infinity of p sub n is equal to 1. So it exists somewhere. That's equal to the constant times the n is equal to 0 to infinity summation of e to the negative n times e0 over kt. Because we know that e sub n is equal to n times e0. Okay? So if we manipulate that, we're going to find that c is equal to 1 over the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity of e to the n times e zero over k times t. All right, and that's the that's the constant. So that means, as a result, that the probability of being at a particular energy level, say e sub n, is equal to e times e to the n times e zero over k times t, divided by the constant, which was the sum from n is equal to zero to infinity of e times negative n times e zero over k t. Alright, I know that looks kind of painful, but really that's it's very straightforward stuff to calculate that. Alright, so now we have the probability. Where do we go from here? So the next thing we need to do is to work out what the energy levels are. And I said in the past that the energy level will say the or the average energy, not the energy level, the average energy will say discrete is equal to the sum from n is equal to zero to infinity of the energy levels multiplied by the probability being that particular energy level. So adding all the probabilities being in the particular energy levels and that will give us our average energy level for dis using a discrete or quantized approach. So let's go ahead and do this. That means that the average energy E is equal to the sum from n is equal to zero to infinity of the following. It's going to be outside E sub n which is a, of course a constant because everything is, has to be an integer multiple of that times e to the, now if we look here, I'm just going to leave it as a, as a power. The power is um, n times e0 over kt. All right, and we need to divide that by the sum, of course, from n is equal to 0 to infinity of e to the negative power. It's the same one. All right? I don't like writing all those exponentials. I find them highly annoying. So the next thing I'm going to do is make a substitution. I'm going to say that beta is equal to positive 1 over k times t. All right, you need to be careful with your substitutions and just think quite carefully about them. So, what can we do as a result of that? Well, we can say that the average energy is equal to the following. It's equal to the sum, I won't even bother writing the rest, times e, e sub n times the exponential of negative n times e0 times beta, all divided by the, uh, let's say, close off this here, another summation times e to the negative n e0 beta. 
Alright, that's very straightforward. Now, the next is a small bit of a sleight of hand. And it isn't really, but it, it, it is, I suppose, a small bit of a sleight of hand. Now, don't get caught up in this. Don't say, well, hold up a second. How am I supposed to know how to do this? Or how am I supposed to work that out on my own? And the truth is, there was no way Max Planck did that. In, in you know, He didn't think about these things and work them out immediately. He had to sit back, have a couple of cups of coffee, think about it, try something, come back, try it again. The whole point of the ultraviolet catastrophe was that he tried it, it didn't work, he obviously had to sit down and go at it again. So in this case, he sat down and he looked at it, and he realized something. He realized he, he was looking at a differential. We'll say a ddx of the lo natural log of x. Well, what is that? That's 1 over x um, times ddx of x. All right, that's that's the that is the definition of the differential of a logarithm. Okay, just one over x times the di differential of the argument. So we see that what we have up here is actually the same thing. We have one over x times ddx of the exponential of of, of the um, ddx of the ddx of the argument. Okay, and after seeing, I have a small bit of oh, I don't have a typo because n times d zero is equal to e, e sub n. So we find, look for example. The ddx is e sub n times the exponential, and 1 over it is just, just here. So it, it, it makes perfect sense. That is exactly what it is. So this means that if we look at it and we say, well, what's dd beta? Let me see c beta. One second, I want to see if we can see it. dd beta of e to the negative n times e0 times beta is equal to, well, e to the power again, times negative n times e0. But what we have, what we have, e to the power times n times e0. So that means that we need to incorporate a negative sign somewhere, and I'll show you that down in a moment. Okay, so remember we have a dt beta times our function. And this is going to look horrendous, all right? This is going to look absolutely horrendous, but it's very straightforward, and I'll give you a small bit of a rhyme and all, uh, and all to know how to remember it. So you have negative dd beta, you have a natural logarithm, and I'm going to draw a different viral summation, and then we have an exponential. Like so, close off this, and close off this. Now that sure does look like a pain in the face. And I suppose the rhyme that I always had in my head was it's, it's uh, minus dd beta, the log of the sum of the exponential to the negative quotient. That's how I remembered that. Uh, and like I said, manipulating it is actually quite straightforward once you see that it is in actual fact a differential. So what do we do next? The next thing we need to do is play around with this. Well, how we do it is by expanding our summation. So on the outside I'm going to have negative d d beta times the natural logarithm times. Now our summation is going to look something like this. It's going to be 1 plus e to the negative e0 times beta plus e to the negative 2 times e0 times beta plus e to the negative 3 times e0 times beta, plus off to infinity. Alright, so um, what you'll see as a result of this is if, well I suppose e to the, we'll say e to the 2e0 times beta is the same as e to the e0 times beta multiplied by e squared. So there are squares there, right, so essentially what we're going to get as a, as a result of this is that we have, let's say, negative d d beta, that's my natural logarithm, times 1 plus e to the negative e0 times beta, plus e to the negative e0 times beta squared, plus, plus and we're getting cubes, fourths, and so on. Those of us that are either good at mathematics or even perhaps a mathematician, we realize that we have something, I suppose it looks like a bit of a binomial expansion. Okay, so what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to do another small bit of a sleight of hand, okay? So you're going to have to bear with me while I do my sleight of hand. Alright, so if you divide, if you divide something, 1, one minus x into 1 minus x, you're going to get, you're going to get certain, you're going to get 1 and 1 plus 0, 1 plus x, plus x squared, and it's going to be plus x here, and so on, okay? The point is, uh, one sec there now, I'm going to show you this, negative 1 minus x, negative x plus x squared, negative x squared, actually, actually negative, positive, uh, negative, I'll let you work into that. There's something I might actually do a separate video on. But you need to do this small bit of a trick. And as a result, you realize that what we have, we have 1 plus x plus x squared plus 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 going up to infinity. That's what we have. So in actual fact, we have 1 minus x. All right? So let me rewrite what we have there. We, we have, and I'm speeding up because I'm actually running out of time on my video. Negative d d beta times the natural logarithm times 1 over 1 minus e to the minus e0 times beta. like that. Next thing is we do the differentiation and we're going to find that the average energy is equal to negative 1 outside of 1 over 1 minus e to the power times d to beta of 1 over 1 minus e to the power. Alright and as a result of that we'll find that the average energy just be very careful when you do this negative 1 times 1 minus e to the power times negative 1 times 1 minus e to the power times negative 2 times negative e to the power again times e0. You just need to be very careful doing that. I know I'm, I'm not writing out those powers because really and truly they're painful. We're nearly very finished now. So we're going to get the average energy is equal to e0 times 1 minus e to the power times e to the power over 1 minus e to the power squared. Therefore the average energy is equal to e0 times e to the power over 1 minus e to the power. So divide by e to the power. And we'll get as a result of that the average energy is equal to e0 over e to the e0 beta minus 1. But beta is equal to 1 over kt. Alright? And as a result, you find that the average energy is equal to e0 over e to the e0 over kt minus 1. That's equal to uh, e discrete. Alright? So that's of course different from the average energy continuous which was kt. So I'm not going to write any more on that. I will actually do a small bit of video on that sleight of hand about the, the, the dividing and so on. So see that, I'll probably put a link into it in this video. Thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.